Hey, hey everyone. In this video, what I wanted to do was go through the steps on how you actually use photo pills for like a huge photo shoot. I know in landscape photography, we always go out and travel to these big epic locations. And I know I've done a video on how to use photo pills, but they're very short, very quick watches. And I wanted to do one that covers basically everything that you need to know in photo pills when you are going on a big shoot. And one of the things that I did a few years ago is used photo pills for the first time to go on a photo shoot that I went to for a few days to Death Valley National Park. I wanted to kind of take you through the steps that I went through to get the shots that I did when I was out in Death Valley. Now, I think PhotoPills is absolutely the best app that you can get for landscape photography, hands down, because of the amount of features that it has. Yes, it is $9. I don't know if they've upped the price since then, but it is a little bit of money to pay for an app, but the benefits and the photos that you get as a result of using it are highly beneficial. So the price for me is okay, and it's got so many things within the app that you can use to plan epic photos, whether those are for interesting lighting hours, sunrise, sunset, Milky Way, night photography, star trails, we're gonna get into all of that in just a second. Now, another thing that's highly beneficial is the night augmented reality and daytime augmented reality features that are in PhotoPills. And I know a lot of people have been using PhotoPills to shoot like those big full moon shots and create really dynamic photos doing that. And I've used that too, but I think the features that get overlooked are the day-to-day -day uses that you can use within photo pills. And lastly, I love that it is usable offline. Now you can't get like satellite imagery offline, but if you're in a location, it's still really beneficial to use the things like augmented reality and just see where the sun is going to be at certain hours when you are out shooting at a location. So if I'm at an overlook, I can use photo pills offline to use augmented reality and see what's going on, where the sun's going to be at any given time. I love that feature and I love that it's built into the app to give landscape photographers that advantage of planning out their shots when they're out scouting in the field. Now, some of the drawbacks for photo pills obviously are the price. I don't like paying for apps, but I do think that the features that are within photo pills definitely outweigh the price that you pay for it. Now, another downside is that it can be extremely overwhelming. I hear from people all the time about when they open photo pills, you know, you have tons of features that you can use, and that's one of the big benefits of it. But if you don't really know how to use it, it can be extremely overwhelming and even cause you to shut down the app and go back to shooting the way you used to, just kind of guessing along the way. In this video, I wanna show you exactly how to use the features that you're gonna use most often in photo pills when you are out shooting, but I'm gonna do so in a way that makes the app not overwhelming for you so that you can really take advantage of what the app has to offer you. So let's jump right into my phone. What I wanted to do is just head over into PhotoPills and open the app. We're gonna be following this plan that I made for Death Valley National Park for this month. We're in March right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and plan that out. So I'm gonna to go to the PhotoPills app, and what's gonna happen is when it opens up, I have so many options and tiles that I can use when I am planning my shoots out. So let's go over to the planner option. When I select the planner option, I have so many things that I can go into. So I can go to planner. Now, the first thing I wanna draw your attention to is the navigation bar at the top of the screen. This is gonna give you options on like the sunrise, sunset, moonrise, moonset, it's gonna give you different things like blue hour and golden hour, what time those are gonna be. The galactic core, when can you see that in your photography if you're shooting at night? So there's a lot on here, again, that can be very overwhelming, but I wanna draw your attention to this option here in the planner. And then what I'm gonna to navigate to in Death Valley is Zabrinsky Point. Now, Zabrinsky Point is a great sunrise location. It's very popular. 
And what you can do here is photograph towards the west as the sun is rising in the east behind you and just get some really, really nice front light on Zabriskie Point as the sun is rising, really lighting up and creating cool lighting features and also a lot of designs in the lines of the rock. So what we can do to plan this out is locate Zabriskie Point. There it is. And I can just zoom in on this feature. And once I'm close enough, what I can do is just tap and hold down my thumb on the screen and it's gonna put a pin exactly where I held my thumb down. Now, with this pin, what I'm going to do is navigate to today. So I'm going to double tap on the clock icon at the bottom of the screen and that's gonna take me to today, March 16th. So if I was shooting here at March 16th and planning this shot, what I could do is scroll this little navigation on the bottom by touching it and moving my thumb from side to side and you'll see that the screen lights up in different colors. Now, when you scroll all the way over to the left, it turns blue. This means we're in the blue hour of shooting. So if you wanted to get to the brisky point before the sun rises, if you look at the bottom of your screen right now, we're at 628 AM, you can get there at 628 or six o'clock and shoot through blue hour. And then scrolling over a little bit more, if you hold your thumb down, that elongates that timeline and I can scroll over and see, okay, getting closer to sunrise, closer to sunrise, and at about seven o'clock, it's gonna turn orange, and then I know that the sunrise is going to happen. So knowing that this time is when the sunrise is gonna happen, if I didn't wanna shoot blue hour, I'm probably gonna get here about 30 to 45 minutes before this, so I know that I wanna get here at roughly 6.15 to set up, get my composition in place, and then be able to start shooting. So that is allowing me to see where the sun is going to be at what time. Now, if you look at the lines on your screen, the lines move at different intervals. If I just scroll this, you can see how fast they can move throughout the day. On the right side of your screen, you'll see a brighter yellow line, and on the left side, you'll see a darker orange line that you can look at. The brighter yellow line is your sunrise. That's the direction and the line of which your sun is going to rise. So if I hover over like right at sunrise where we were, I know it's rising in the due east and I can see if I'm shooting away from the sun towards the brisky point, I know that the sun is gonna be directly at my back. If I wanted to turn around and shoot directly at the sun here, there are some interesting compositions you can get at this location, but if I was shooting directly at the sun, I would know exactly where that location is happening. Now, to really visualize this and see this, I wanna use the power of augmented reality here. So I'm gonna to go to the very bottom of the screen and you'll see a little thing that says AR. Now I'm gonna tap AR and augmented reality is gonna come up. Now, I'm obviously filming in my office, so if I hold this up, you can see the camera that I'm filming on. However, if I rotate this and I was out in the field, I would know that right here, facing due east is exactly where the sun is going to rise. Now, what I would do here is line this up with an interesting feature, a peak of a mountain, and try to get this as interesting of a composition as possible. This is gonna give me tons of advantages when I am waiting on the sun to come up, because if I was using something like a telephoto lens, I could zoom way in on a feature and know where the sun is going to come up. So if I did want that big ball sun in the sky in a specific location, I could get it there. Now there are also other features to know. If you go back to your main menu, you can go to the sun option. And what you have here are the rising times and the setting times of the sun. So 7.04 to 7.04, exactly 12 hours of shooting time on this specific day. And if you scroll down, you'll see the golden hour for sunset, uh, the exact sunset time, blue hour and all that. You can see golden hour for the morning. So you do have different options when you look at the sun option on your main menu that you can scroll through and look at to plan out your daytime shooting. Now, one last thing, if you go back to the planner menu, what you can do is save your plan. So I can go to save plan, and I've already saved this out, but you can do new plan, type in the name of your plan, and it'll save exactly the time, the location, the date 
that you're gonna be there so that if you are planning this in advance before you get there, or if you're out scouting, you can always navigate back to this menu to see where these plans are gonna be. So what I'm gonna do is zoom out of Zabriskie Point, and I'm just gonna go a short distance over to Badwater Basin. And if I scroll down and get down to Badwater right here, and zoom into Badwater Basin. Now when I zoom in, I can go to the photo location and see if I zoom in all the way, here are those really nice, crispy mud tiles that you have to shoot with on this salt flat. Now I was out there at a really rare event when it flooded in March a couple of years ago, and I was able to get some of these shots of sunset, but how do you actually plan that sunset? Well, if you're out there at sunset, we're still in this sunrise sunset menu on top. And if I look to the right side of the screen, I can see that the sun is setting at approximately seven o'clock PM. So let's hold my screen down. I can set a pen. And what I wanna do now is just scroll and see exactly where that sun is going to set. So I'm scrolling all the way to the end of the day. If you see the line that's going west, the smaller orange line, you can see that that is the position of the sun at two o'clock, three o'clock, four, five, six. We're getting closer to sunset. And now when I hover over around 7 p.m., that's when that golden hour starts to kick in. So if I am facing due west, I can see exactly where that sun is going to be. Now the classic shot is using these tiles that are salty and muddy and just dry and cracked using those as your foreground and using the mountains as your background and then having the sun behind those. So if I'm here, I know that the sun is going to set around this time. So again, I can hit augmented reality and instead of facing east like I did last time, I'm going to hold my screen up to the west and see exactly where that sun is going to be in the sky. So when I see that point, I can know, okay, this is where my sun is going to line up behind these mountains. Here's kind of where I want my composition to show up. So again, very beneficial to you when you are planning out your photography. Again, I can save this location, go to save, plan, and now I'm at Badwater Sunset. Again, March 16th, 6.30 p.m. I know where I wanna be and where I want to shoot based on the planning that I did beforehand in photo pills. Now let's say I wanna do something a little bit different. Let's say that I wanna shoot Milky Way that night and where I wanna do this is at Mesquite Dunes. So Mesquite Dunes is only a little ways away if I just go north. And once you start seeing the Mesquite Dunes on the screen, you can zoom into those. They just look like a bunch of little ripples pretty close to stove type wells, a place where you can fuel up your car, camp, whatever you wanna do there. But once I am in Mesquite Dunes, one of the things that you need to know is that with Milky Way planning, your planning is gonna be a little bit different here. So what I wanna do is scroll on the top bar a little bit to the right, and I'm gonna to go to this screen. So when I'm on this screen, I can see that how much of the galactic center is actually going to be visible and also the position of that galactic center. Now the galactic center is the big core of the Milky Way. It's that big bright spot of the Milky Way that's in the very middle of the two tails of the Milky Way. The galactic core is the center of our own galaxy that's gonna show up the, as bright as possible. This is the dynamic part of the Milky Way that you wanna photograph, so you want to know when the galactic core is gonna be at its best. So using this, you can see, okay, at the bottom of my screen, I have during this time, I know that my moon is gonna be below the horizon, so my skies are gonna be as dark as possible. So I do know here that this would be a good time to shoot. However, at this time of year, the Milky Way has still not risen over the horizon for us to shoot that core at. So I'm just gonna hold my finger down on the screen right here. And as you can see, now that my pen is in Mesquite Dunes, you have this different line that's come up. It's this dotted arch. That's actually the location and angle and arch of the Milky Way. The 
wider dots are actually the galactic core. So the widest is gonna be the core here. Now, I also know that if I scroll over here, it means that the Milky Way has not yet risen. So once it rises, what happens is, is you can look at the bottom bar here and see that the moon, the blue dot on the screen at the bottom, has actually come up above the horizon. The horizon is this darkish line that's going across the screen. So at this point, the moon is up. You're not gonna be seeing as much of the galactic core based on how bright the moon can be and wash that out. And then soon the sun actually comes up right after it. So you can be thinking, well, what day do I actually go out and photograph the Milky Way? Well, we can do that if we just tap on the Milky Way icon at the top of the screen it'll take us to the next best Milky Way day. Now, since I was shooting on the 16th of March, this is telling me on the 24th of March, the galactic core is going to be at its best. So since that's happening at its best on the 24th, I know maybe I should plan some other day shoots on the 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, and then closer to the 24th is when I actually need to go out and photograph the Milky Way itself. So once I do that, what I'm gonna do is scroll this timeline. You can see the moon is well below the horizon on the timeline, and you'll see the wide dots that are the galactic core of the Milky Way start to show up. Now, when I rotate this a little bit more, you can see the angle and archway that is the Milky Way and where that's going to show up. You also have a representation up in the icon in the top left corner of your screen here that's gonna show you how much angle the Milky Way has. Now, early in the Milky Way season, it's gonna be really low on the horizon, that low angle shot that you get. Later in the year in the Northern Hemisphere, like July, June, it's gonna be more upright, and it's also going to rise much earlier in the evening. Say, right now, we're at about 3 a.m. that we start our shooting process, and the Milky Way is low on the horizon. Later on in the year, June, July-ish, what you get is earlier Milky Way rises somewhere like 11 p.m. and that Milky Way is gonna be much higher of an angle in the sky, pretty much straight up and down. But since I am shooting on this night, I'm just gonna find where that Milky Way is gonna be. Now, if I'm planning this out during the day, which I highly recommend that you do for a Milky Way shot, because you don't wanna be fumbling around looking for locations in complete darkness, you want to find this location and set up your composition. Now, the best way to do that is using your night augmented reality. Remember, the augmented reality is for daytime shots. Night augmented reality is for nighttime shots. So what I'm going to do is go to night AR and I'm going to pull this up. Screen looks pretty similar. There's us filming and I'm just going to look in my augmented reality and find the actual core of the Milky Way, which is pretty much due east at this point. So since I see it due east, you'll see this big orange ball on the screen of where you can see the most pronounced area of the Milky Way. That's gonna be where my galactic core is at this time of day. Now, since I'm here, I don't wanna go back to the other screen and just have to like toggle through these constantly. What I wanna do is scroll through this timeline. I can use the same timeline on the bottom of this screen to scroll through the time of this Milky Way. Now when I do, in the top left corner of the screen, it changes this time. So I know here, I can see my horizon line, east, southeast, it's about 2 a.m. in the morning. So this is probably what I'm gonna want to get to my location, start setting up because that Milky Way core is still just so low on the horizon, you may not be able to get a whole lot based on the ambient light that you're shooting in. So if I scroll over, about 3.15 is probably when I would wanna start this shoot and get that Milky Way going. So once I have that in here, I can start setting up my composition using the night augmented reality and see where and when the Milky Way is going to be so that I have a successful shot at night. I've used this several times to get Milky Way shots and it never fails on getting me the best compositions based on where I am for the Milky Way. Now, there are a lot of other features that are within PhotoPills that we should look at when we are setting up our shots. So 
photo pills, this is the planning options that we have and the most used planning options that are available to us as landscape photographers. But I can also go back to my main menu and find things like the hyperfocal table that's gonna tell me where in my composition can I focus to using the hyperfocal distance rule and see where exactly I am setting up my shot. Now the hyperfocal distance rule basically says focus anywhere between a third of the way into your screen and the bottom halfway between that point and then focus to infinity is gonna give you sharp, acceptable focus throughout the shot. You can use features like focus stacking to get your shot right, but generally for a night shot, this is gonna give you about as good of focus that's acceptable if you are just out shooting and you don't wanna blow up your print to like five feet wide or anything like that. So what you can do is click on the hyperfocal distance table and this is gonna tell me a lot of different things based on what I'm shooting with. So in the camera option, you can click on the camera. Now I already have mine selected as Sony a7R II. I'm gonna click okay on that. Now my lens is a Tamron 17 to 28 f2.8 lens. So that would probably be the wide angle lens that I use to shoot the Milky Way. Again, wide angle just looks good with Milky Ways. That's how it is. You can shoot with the telephoto if you want, but the best is the wide angle lens for the Milky Way. You can get as much Milky Way into the shot as possible. So I can go to 17 millimeters as wide as I'm gonna go and line it up on the table with f2.8 as wide as an aperture as I can get with the Milky Way as well. And that's telling me 3.42 meters within to the frame away from the bottom of the camera is gonna be my hyperfocal distance point. So I wanna set that point up within my composition while I'm out planning so that I know exactly where that hyperfocal distance is going to be so that when I am shooting in the dark and it's hard to see those edges and get them really crisp, I can see where they are in the daytime and actually lock in my manual focus on that either by using a grease pencil and marking that on my lens or using tape and taping that down. Now, oftentimes this is gonna be your infinity point when you are out shooting. Now, speaking of focus, you can also do other things like the depth of field table. When I select that, what I can do is do the exact same thing that I was doing. So I can scroll to my camera make and the 17 millimeter focal length. And what that's gonna do is give me an idea when I scroll over to f2.8, subject distance is on the left side of my screen. So I can scroll down here on how far away I am from my subject distance. And that's gonna give me an answer of, you know, 1.73 meters to infinity is going to be within a focus. I know that from the hyperfocal distance table as well, and I can see that when I am out in the field shooting. So when I am out into the field, I can select, let's say this, and go to the visual representation, and this is just gonna give me a visual idea of how close to something that I can be when I am out shooting. Now lastly, if you do wanna get creative with your photographs, what you can do is use something like the star trails table, this is gonna give you an idea of how much star trail detail you can get into the motion of the stars when you're shooting. So you can go here and let's say that I was going to photograph this for an hour and a half. So I can go to one hour, 30 minutes, hit done. And this is gonna give me an idea of what this is actually going to look like when I am out shooting star trails. And let's say I was shooting at a different angle too. Let's say I was shooting at 15 degrees. So the star trails are gonna be less pronounced there. If I move this to about 30 degrees of an angle of shooting, they're gonna be more pronounced and show up a lot more and have way more star trail action in these. I use this all the time. I love star trails. They're one of my favorite types of photography to go shoot. And you can also switch between your north and south point when you are out shooting. Now you can also do pinpoint star trails. So pinpoint star trails are gonna give you spot stars. Again, we can navigate to the lens, the millimeter length that we're using, f2.8. And then you can also do minimal declination. That gets pretty nerdy and technical real fast. So I never really use that. So NPF rule is gonna tell us that 6.56 seconds 
is going to be the length of exposure. And it takes into account the number of megapixels that are on your camera. But also if you wanna go by the 500 rule, this is a class, classic route and it fails with some of the more recent cameras that have a lot of megapixels in them. So what I like to do is kind of just judge in between these where I'm gonna shoot. So between 6.56 and maybe 30 seconds, I may go to like 12, 15 second long exposures to get those pinpoint stars on my camera. Lastly, let's go to time-lapse. If you did wanna do a time-lapse of say the Milky Way, we wanted this whole clip of a time-lapse to be 10 seconds long, so I'm gonna hit done. And then also it gives me a option of the event duration. How long is this event going to last? A full Milky Way rise in March, let's say if I was doing a time-lapse of that, is going to be about three, three and a half, even four hours long. Let's say I was gonna shoot for three hours, so I would just type in three and the hour point, hit done, and then it's gonna tell me at 24 frames per second, the interval of shooting is gonna be 45 seconds, number of photos 240, and it's going to take about 960 megabytes on my SD card. Just gives me a good visual option of how much data this is gonna use on my cards and how much time this is gonna be used in the field of shooting a time-lapse. Now, these are all the options and features that you're probably going to use when you are out shooting on a big trip. So I highly recommend downloading photo pills before you go on your trip and start planning all these out with a general idea of what you're going to be shooting. Now, I do wanna take that with a grain of salt because when you do go out and shoot and scout your locations, you should fine tune those based on the saved plans that you do have within photo pills that you've saved beforehand. Keep these things in mind and refresh your memory before you go on your trips. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button and the bell. Thanks for watching.